We've seen them all before. A bagel is a circular bread with a hole in the center. It's typically enjoyed for breakfast with cream cheese and a steaming cup of coffee. But it's the texture that makes a bagel special. Beautifully browned on the outside, but chewy on the inside. And if you bake them at home, you'll get a nice crisp crust that will curse your past self from ever getting supermarket bagels. I know because I used to buy these back in college. Dark times. When it comes to New York style bagels, you can make them pretty complex if you want to. But the recipe that I'm gonna share with you today, which starts right here, doesn't use anything like a 48 hour cold fermentation. You don't need New York water, you don't need barley malt syrup or lye. In fact, this one is kind of a bare bones version with stuff that you likely already have in your pantry. But before we get to that recipe, I do wanna cover what makes a bagel a bagel. So the question is, what makes a bagel different from the light crumb of a baguette or focaccia bread? The ingredients are nearly identical, but the only key differences are the hydration of the dough and the cooking method. You see, bagels are made with very low hydration doughs, which will be stiff compared to its sticky, high hydration counterparts. This low hydration, however, leads to a dense and chewy crumb compared to the light and airy one of high hydration. How about that cooking method? Well, after proofing, bagels are dropped into boiling water and then they are baked. Why are they boiled first though? So when the bagels are dropped into the hot water, it hydrates and gels the starches from the flour on the surface of the bagel. When baked off, these create micro blisters on the surface, giving us extra crisp texture on the exterior that drives those supermarket bagels to shame. How does adding things like lye or barley malt syrup to the boiling water change thing? Well, the baseness of lye speeds up the Maillard or browning reaction, but you can also use baked baking soda or just regular baking soda like I did, or no baking soda at all. The barley malt syrup adds flavor, and those sugars will also help with browning once it is baked, or if you are like me, you can just substitute honey. Now, I did some extremely subjective scientific tests on my Instagram and found that I like the baking soda and honey mixture the most. I also added an egg wash, which is applied afterwards to help with more browning, just like a brioche bun. So with all that being said, will high gluten flour lead to a different texture? Sure it will, but all the stores are out of bread flour near me, and I found that all purpose worked just fine this time around. Use what you have. Does New York water actually make the bagels better? Nope, Dan over at Cook's Illustrated did a beautiful breakdown you can watch on that if you want. But how about that 48 hour cold fermentation? Well, it will generate new flavor compounds, and if you have the time, I say go for it. So with all that being said, you can really customize these bagels to exactly what you like or to whatever you have on hand. I mean, I'll tell you straight up that these are better than some of the New York style bagels that I had in New York City. I used to travel there all the time for work every week, and I've had a fair bit of their bagels, and these are definitely better than some of them that I've had. But with that being said, let's hop into the recipe before I take a bite out of this beautiful thing. Start by adding eight grams of instant yeast and 20 grams of honey to 300 milliliters of warm water. Stir this until it is completely dissolved and then let stand for five minutes until a light foam surfaces and some bubble are visible. Proofing is done to test the viability of that yeast and if there's no foam surface or little bubbles, the yeast is likely dead and should be discarded for new yeast. With the addition of sugar in the form of honey, that yeast should be very active. Meanwhile, add 500 grams of flour and 10 grams of salt to a large mixing bowl. Once the yeast is proofed, pour in the mixture and vigorously mix the dough with your hands until no dry flour remains in the bowl and a cohesive mass forms, probably about two to three minutes. The dough will be pretty stiff to work with due to its low hydration. I use 60% in this recipe, but some recipes go lower to 55 or even 50%. Once it's mixed, cover the bowl with plastic wrap and let it rest for 15 minutes. Resting is going to allow the flour to start hydrating all on its own and make the dough a little bit easier to work with when we start kneading it. Once rested, turn the dough out onto the counter. Knead the dough by pressing with the heel of your hand away from you, then fold the dough back over and repeat. You're gonna continue kneading for eight to 10 minutes, and I like to set a timer and just throw on some Netflix to make sure we develop that gluten. The dough is gonna be pretty stiff due to that low hydration, but as it is kneaded, it will become more pliable and smooth on the outside.
After the eight to 10 minutes, the dough should be looking something like this. You wanna test for gluten development by cutting off a small piece of the dough and stretching it out thin to see if it can get slightly translucent before tearing. This gluten window test is the key to understanding if the flour has been hydrated enough. If the dough tears before getting to slightly translucent window, continue kneading the dough for another couple of minutes. That gluten needs to be developed for the extra chewiness of the bagel. After kneading, spritz the bowl with some baking spray, add the dough and cover it up with plastic wrap. We're gonna let the dough rise until it is doubled in size, about 45 to 60 minutes. Once the dough has doubled, turn it out onto the counter and divide it into eight 100 gram portions. Once they're portioned, shape each one into a tot ball and let them rest for five minutes. Meanwhile, you can get out a large baking sheet and sprinkle over some cornmeal where we'll place our shaped bagels. Now for actually shaping them, there are two main options. You can either do them rolled or you can do them punched. For the rolled version, roll the dough flat to about five inches wide. Then roll it into a tight cylinder and seal the seam. Using your hands, just roll that out until it is about maybe eight inches long. And then you can wrap the cylinder around your hand and connect the two ends with a pinch and roll the dough ring off of your hand. I'll let you see that one more time what it looks like from my point of view. This rolled method is typically the one used in bagel shops. It stretches the gluten more and is said to give a chewier bagel, but I'll be honest, I didn't notice much difference in side-by-side -side taste tests, so I would suggest trying it for yourself. For the punch bagel, punch a hole in the dough with your thumb and index finger. Now stick your index finger from each hand into the hole and gently stretch the hole while rotating your fingers until it's about two inches wide. Whichever method you choose, repeat that process with the remaining bagels and place them on the cornmeal baking sheet to proof. Cover that baking sheet with plastic wrap or another upside down baking sheet and you're gonna let these proof for about 45 to 60 minutes at room temperature. Alternatively, the bagels can be placed in the fridge to proof overnight or even up to two days. That cold, slow fermentation will generate additional flavor compounds. Maybe try it out with a couple bagels in your own batch if you don't wanna eat them all the same day. With 15 minutes left to proof the bagels, fill a large wok or pot with about two liters or two quarts of water and set that on high heat and bring it to a boil. Additionally, preheat the oven to 475 degrees Fahrenheit on the convection setting. 500 Fahrenheit if you don't have convection. We're also gonna repair our bagel seasonings and the egg wash. For the everything bagel seasoning, I mixed one spoonful of black sesame seeds, one spoonful of white sesame seeds, two spoonfuls of poppy seed, a half spoonful of garlic powder, half spoonful of onion powder, and one full spoonful of Morton's coarse kosher salt, and just mix that up together. Then for a second flavor I wanted to test, I grated in some Parmesan cheese, sprinkled in some garlic powder, five cranks of black pepper, and a couple cranks of red pepper flakes as well. And spoiler alert, this combo is insanely good. For the egg wash, crack in an egg, one-handed for a cooking flex, and then whisk that a little bit together and add some water and whisk it together again. All right, let's get back to those bagels. After 60 minutes, this is what my bagels looked like. Yours may take a little longer or shorter depending on the yeast and temperature. Basically, you just want them to be about doubled in size. And now we need to boil them. Again, this is what causes the starch to gel on the surface and create a crisp micro blister on the outside when we bake them. Depending on what you have in your pantry, you can add a variety of things to this boiling water like barley malt syrup, lye, baked baking soda, but this is what I sprung for. So to the boiling water, I added 15 grams of baking soda, 15 grams of salt, and 30 grams of honey, and mix that up until it is completely dissolved. The baking soda and the honey will help with browning while the salt helps season the water. And you can see it's got this nice brown hue to it. Set the pan of proofed bagels on the left and another parchment lined baking sheet on the right. Now drop the bagels into the wok in small batches. You're gonna let them boil on one side for about 45 seconds. Then using a slotted spoon, flip the bagel and cook for another 45 seconds.
Remove the boiled bagels from the water and let them drip off a bit before placing it on the baking sheet. Just repeat that process until all the bagels are done. And you can see as you cook them, they'll start getting browner on themselves just from those ingredients that we added to the water. And then that will really amp it up once we put them into the oven. With all the bagels boiled, it is now time to add our toppings. Gently brush the egg wash on the bagels to create an even coat on the outside. This is going to help give us that nice browning. And you can skip this step and just sprinkle over your seasonings if you would like, but I like the look and texture the egg brings and the seasonings do stick a little bit better. Once it's egg wash, now we can add our seasonings. So I left two of them completely plain, two of them I did with white sesame seeds, two I did with everything bagel seasoning, and two I did with that garlic parmesan and red pepper flake mixture. But whatever you wanna do, feel free to try it out. This is a time to have some fun in the kitchen and experiment with different flavor combinations. Once seasoned, slide the bagels into the oven and set a timer for 15 minutes. About halfway through, I like to rotate the pan to ensure even browning on all sides. Now remove them from the oven and place on the cooling rack for at least 10 minutes before slicing in and enjoying. I mean, just look at these beauties. Crisp exterior, chewy interior. These make a ferocious egg sandwich, but for this one, I kept it simple with some cream cheese and they absolutely do not need toasting right out of the oven, though you can go ahead and do it if you would like. And now let's taste that garlic Parmesan pepper bagel. This is the bagel with garlic Parmesan red pepper. Let's give it a taste. I already tried the everything bagel. Absolutely delicious. Wow. The chewiness of these bagels. Oh my, so good. This full recipe is gonna be up on my website. As always, link down below. But, oh my, these bagels. If you guys got the time this weekend or any weekend, you have to try these out. And this garlic Parmesan with the red pepper, garlicky, cheesy, a little spicy on the tingle, the tingle of your lips. Oh my goodness. I actually want to try making a sandwich or something out of this. It'd be unreal. And like I was saying, you can really make these as complex or as simple as you want to. Mine was kind of in the middle of the road one. You know, I used baking soda in the water along with the honey and the salt. Um, but you could use the barley malt syrup, you could get lye, you could use none of that stuff too. I mean, it's, it's completely up to you depending on how much time you have. You know, you can do the 48 hour fermentation or you can do the, you know, what we did like an hour and a half, two hours. And I mean, these taste absolutely delicious. Gonna be better than anything you can get in the supermarket. Maybe unless the supermarket has a really good bakery, but I feel like most supermarkets don't have good bagels. You have to go to like a proper bagel place to get them. But that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Like I said, recipe will be linked down below for you guys to try this out. That's gonna wrap it up for me. I will catch you all in the next one.